Well, I mean, what do I agree with? I think I will pick, it, I will pick and choose. Uh, I think in terms of the basic fundamental mechanisms, the things that he's describing in the theory, I think that's more or less correct. I mean, I think, though, what isn't so clear is the idea that there's no direction to evolution. Um, and um, because one of the things, I guess, that I would find most problematic about Darwin's theory of evolution is that there's no explanation for why human beings are as distinct of the creatures that we are. Um, so in other words, he can't explain, for example, why we're able to do things like science itself. And for me, I think that's always the biggest problem for a Darwinist, because most of what we do under the name of science, in fact, puts the species under great risk. If you think about with nuclear energy, you think about a lot of the uses that we've made of physics and chemistry, and even the biological sciences with regard to eugenics and the way we've sort of changed agriculture and so forth in the past hundred years. Um, and yet we have, we, have left the species, we have left the species stronger, we have become more important uh, as a presence on the planet. And while there are a lot of concerns about whether we can survive in that fashion, the fact of the matter is we have a kind of power over things that are not directly relevant to our survival in ways that no other species has ever had. And it's not clear from within, from within Darwin's theory of evolution, why should we have such powers? And it doesn't explain why should we, we should be interested in, in flying in space, in understanding the beginning of the universe or the end of the universe. Those things have no relevant to, relevance to our biological survival, yet they are nevertheless very much part of what makes us human beings. And so I would say the idea that there's no direction to evolution and that there's no special place being accorded to human beings is my main objection with Darwin's theory of evolution. I mean, the theory that now gets called the neo-Darwinian synthesis goes way beyond what Darwin put forward. I understand that. But still, within that theory, there is no special place accorded to human beings. So that part of it hasn't changed. And that would be my main objection. Well, I do think, um, see, this is where I do take seriously the idea of our being created in the image and likeness of God. I do think there is a kind of God-like quality to human beings in terms of our aspirations to have a kind of complete understanding and mastery of everything in reality. I think that's what motivates our science, our philosophy, even our art. Um, and I do think that that is what it means to be a human being. Now, how we realize that, I think, is the interesting question, what human history has been about. And in a sense, that's why the Humanity 2.0 is such an interesting idea for me, because what's at stake is the extent to which our biological bodies, which are the products of evolution, the extent to which that's necessary for our continuing this project of being human. Do we still need to remain with the biological inheritance that, that we've got? Or can we move into some other medium or even radically transform our biological bodies? Basically, I think human beings have always treated, well, that would be wrong to say, but I think certainly within the West, there's been this strong tendency to treat nature as basically a resource, as raw material for the advancement of the human condition. Um, and our interest in animals, in a way, began both with uh, under, you know, the role that they might play in food production and also the role they might play in companionship. So, you know, both of those aspects have been very much part of the human interest, even in animals. Um, and I think that, that what happens over time, of course, is that because we've been treating nature in such an instrumental way, we start thinking about ways of replacing it or going beyond it or something of that kind. Now, I say this is about the West because I do think when you get to the the Eastern traditions and philosophy and so forth, uh, uh, especially the religions of China and India. And, um, there I do think uh, there's a greater spirituality that's invested in nature and where in a way nature itself has a kind of divine quality. But I don't think that's really the, ro the dominant view in the West, um, especially w after the rise of Christianity. Well, either uh, brilliant or disastrous. I think basically we, it could go either way. Um, I'm one of these people who believes that we can radically transform ourselves successfully. Um, and, but nevertheless, I think that this is not an easy job and it, it will involve taking a lot of risks and it will involve, I think, a, a lot of difficulty and hardship along the way. But I think there is a sense in which one has to have a kind of faith in what it is to be a human being. Um, and, and that's one reason why I think it's always 
important to kind of keep the theological dimension in mind because that has been the strand of the thinking that has actually given human beings the strongest position in nature, uh, much more so than anything that you can get from studying biology or even social science where the differences between human and animal are every day being diminished, you see. Yeah. Well, I think if you can get the speakers to uh, actually um, speak in the spirit of it, I think it's a great idea, right? I mean, so if, if people are willing to speak out of the box, then, then it's a great idea. And I think that's the thing that's really important, that people understand what that concept means. Uh, and it's not just delivering the usual academic paper.